Welcome back to our channel, guys. If you're new here, we're Richie, Laura, Frankie and Freddie, and you join us on our Round the World tour in Camper Van Kev. This week, we spend our first week back in Turkey, starting off with Numerat Mountain. We hope you enjoy it. Before we get started this week, guys, we thought we'd just let you know that we've got some new camera equipment. Before we used to film on our phones and we was quite limited and restricted to what we could film, so we got some new stuff. I'll let you explain. <laughs> yeah, so the main thing that we wanted to do was replace the drone that we lost. If you watched a couple of weeks ago, you'll see that we lost it in a tree. So we now have a DJI Mini 3 and it is amazing. So back to some good drone footage again, which I'm sure you'll be pleased to see. But on top of that, while we was there, we thought we'd get a proper camera and a proper mic as well. So hopefully it will start to improve the audio. Um, it's going to take a while for us to get used to it all. We're not very technical people, but hopefully, as soon as we do get the swing of it, it will start producing a lot better content. And also, we picked up a GoPro, so we'll be showing you a lot more underwater footage. So right, let's get back to the film. So today we are off back up the mountains. It's another historical site. I think it's Mount Nemrut Dogi or something like that. I'll put it on the screen. You know our pronunciation is not great. But yeah, this is our park up. This is where we've been for a couple of days now, getting a few things sorted out since getting back into Turkey, testing all the new gear out, still trying to get our heads around it. So hopefully it all turns out all right on, on YouTube, but we shall see. But yeah, it's a nice little spot here. Yeah, it's been really nice. We've been here for the last couple of nights. Yeah. Um, it's got a Roman bridge um, and it's all lit up at night time, which is really pretty. Um, and there's a little restaurant just above, um, which we managed to get some waters from yesterday. Um, and the stream going through, that was well worth it yesterday, wasn't it? With well the needed. It's so hot, this part of Turkey. It's been about 40 degrees, so we've barely left that cold river. So it's been really nice. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to get packed up and get up there. So after winding our way around those really steep mountain roads, loads of hairpin bends, not doing Kev much good to be honest, we've made it to the ticket office. We're just two kilometres away from the top. We've got two kilometres more to go up the mountain roads. Laura's getting a ticket from the ticket office. And we're going to check this out. Can't wait to see what it is. I've seen pictures and we've really been looking forward to this one. It looks really good. So the tickets were 50 lira each. Um, and Fred goes free because he's seven. So not badly priced. Then we've just got to go two kilometres back up. Um, and then we get to see the statues. Well, we're up here. And what amazing views as well. We've got a little bit of a walk now. I think it's about 15, 20 minutes. But the views are just unbelievable from up here. Open air, side by side we sway there in all the colors. So we are here. It was definitely worth the climb. Look at it, it's amazing. And it's just so much history to it. And the views from up here, it's like we're literally on top of the world. It's like we're in the Sahara Desert or somewhere. There's literally nothing around for miles. It's just incredible. That. Just, just to be up here and to see this, this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity especially for the children. Nemrut Dagi sits at 2,134 metres high at the peak of Mount Nemrut. The ancient ruins date back to the 1st century BC and is one of the most iconic UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The statues were once one piece, but over time the heads have fallen off and have been placed in front of each statue. So 
So this part here is on the eastern terrace of the Mount Nimrut. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and I think then there's some other parts to it which is on the western terrace. So we've just been told no drones unfortunately. There's no signs or anything so we thought we'd give it a go but the security just come and told us to pack away. Luckily managed to get a little bit of footage before he got to us so at least we've got something to show you from there. So we've now moved around to the western terrace. All the statues are a little bit smaller this side. There's a few head carvings, um, eagles, lions, pretty much the same as the other side, just on a smaller scale, but equally as impressive. So we got up here for seven o'clock this morning because by about half past ten it is scorching so it's definitely worth coming up here early if you're going to come up or some people say to come up at sunset. It's crazy to think that these are all hand carved all them years ago. I don't even know how they got up this high on a mountain because just driving up here was hard enough let alone walking. All of this it just all amazes me. That was really good, definitely worth a visit. We're now on the way back down to Kev and we've got to go through all them mountain roads again. guys morning so after visiting Nemrat Deggy yesterday we decided to hit the road we've done about five hours driving aiming back towards the coast um, we was aiming for Mersin we found a park up about half an hour away from Mersin and it was really nice we got there it was right by the river uh, me and the boys and it, Laura as well we was all having a little jump in nice and refreshing after a hot drive um, but there were some people there since being in Turkey, we haven't seen any drunk Turkish people. <laughs> you can barely get a beer out here. It takes ages to go to a shop to find beer. Um, so we wasn't expecting it whatsoever, was we? <laughs> no, there was a group of probably about 10 boys or men and uh, yeah, they were absolutely steaming yeah. and they just would not leave us alone. And it just put us on edge a little bit. We didn't feel in danger or nothing, but it just didn't feel right. No, on Park for Night, um, one of the comments was that um, they had been knocked on the door at early hours of the morning by the police to say that it was quite a dangerous spot um, and there was a few burglaries in the area. Um, so, but we didn't let that put us off because it was really nice, but after being around a lot of people and them seeing what the dog was like and it just put us on edge didn't it so yeah we just weren't too sure what to do like i say we didn't feel in danger but we weren't getting left alone so we looked on park for night again and we found this at motorhome stopover it was only 10 minutes away and it's all completely free they have showers they have toilets um it's all secure and everything they even have free washing machines and a dishwasher which yeah. is quite handy and it was really relaxed um there was a couple of dutch motorhomes a couple of turkish um, and everyone was really friendly. I had a nice little chat with a few of the people here last night and yeah, just nice to relax. So the reason we've come down this far is because we need to get Kev into a garage but we think it's going to be a couple of days job so we're probably going to stay in an apartment while he's getting repaired. So first job for, the, for today is to go and find a garage. Yeah, and I've been on the phone all morning. Um, I've tried, we, our water pump has actually broke in the van as well, which has been gone for a, what, a couple of weeks. Yeah, a bit of a pain. Um, so the nearest place is Istanbul. Obviously we're not gonna drive all the way there because it's a mission away. Um, so I've managed to, uh, th this is the thing here with Turkish people again as well. They're so trusting and so nice. 
Um, luckily the people next to us um, managed to speak quite a bit, good bit of English, she lived in Canada. Um, so she managed to help me fill out the address of where I need to send it to, to the villa. Um, but our Turk, we haven't got Turkish um, credit cards or bank cards, so none of the websites work. Um, so she was like, it's fine if it doesn't work, um, you can give us cash and then we'll pay for it online. So it's just so nice of them. Um, luckily we've managed to speak to the company and managed to bank transfer it over to them. So we now have that on order. How long it's going to take, I have no idea. They've said two days once the money hits their bank account. So I'm hoping it hits today and then we'll have it by Wednesday, Thursday time. So let's go and find this garage. <laughs> Okay, so we've finally arrived at the mechanic. So I think Richie's managed to explain what we need doing. Kev is going to be treated to his new rear leaf springs. He's having a service. He's having the air con regassed. Um, there's so much to it, but I'll be so glad once he's had a nice little going over and uh, he's back to new again. So that's explained well. He managed to get an English person up on the phone, well, a Turkish that speaks English, um, and managed to translate for us. We're dropping us off at the villa, well, it's an apartment that we've booked um, now, and then Richie's gonna come back with the van in a bit to drop it off. I don't even think it's gonna take too long, hopefully. Um, so yeah. Not too bad. We got the apartment sorted on Airbnb and it's really nice for the money. I've just dropped Laura and the boys off there. Uh, we've done a bit of shopping as well, but now I'm going to take the van back to the garage and then get a taxi back and then we can unwind for a bit and I'll show you around. Well, that's Kev in the garage behind us. Really nice guys as well. They're helping us out quite a lot here. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. They're saying by tomorrow should be ready to pick up. It's always nerve wracking leaving him, but I'm sure he's in good hands. Finally in a taxi on the way back to the apartment. It's been a long day today. A lot of messing around, but it's all gonna be worth it. It's gonna be brand new. And relax. I've been waiting for this. Cheers. So whilst Kev is in the mechanics, we decided to get an apartment. We're not going to show you too much of it and do too much footage here as this is not what the channel is about. But let's show you around. So first thing is this massive kitchen. We've got an oven in Kev, but it's not as big or as huge as this one. And it's lovely to be able to serve up food on the counter. And it's just brilliant. Next thing is the living room slash dining room. I have never seen such a big dining room table. It's so big um, and it's so nice to be able to chill out on the two big sofas over here because it can get quite confined in Kev. There's not enough, a lot of room so to chill out on them is brilliant. Good thing as well, we've got our little Lulu. She's chilling out. So all of the things on Airbnb that we book this through, um, a lot of them are dog friendly, so it's best to go on places like that. And they, a lot of the time they say yes, as long as it's clean when we leave it. So yeah, brilliant. Also, Popsy Who's with us and the aircon. Oh my God, we need one of these in Kev. It's so nice to get out of the hot air and be in the cool air for a change. Anyway, let's go to the balcony. Look at this, this is so big, it's so spacious. Managed to get so much laundry done and hung out. Um, and then just behind us here is literally the pool. Kids are gonna enjoy that. So now on to the bedrooms. Mm. We've got two bedrooms. Um, one's a sofa bed type bed and one's a double bed for me and Richie, but they're quite spacious. <clears throat> nice to have a fan in the room. <laughs> and then this is the boys room. Again, massive. And it's just nice to be able to have a bit of space. The boys being here, us being in another room. 
and just to chill out for once because being in a confined space in Kev, you, you do get on top of each other. And now to the bathroom. And this is the place that I am going to make the most of. Having hot water and the washing machine. Can't get better than this. So that sums up our tour guys and um, hopefully we shall get the van back soon, fingers crossed. So good news, we just had the call that Kev's ready. So I'm just going to walk out onto the road, try and get a taxi, go and pick him up. Missing him already. Lovely, and there's one there waiting. And we are away. That's the good thing about taxis in Turkey. There's so many of them, and they're so reasonable as well. Now we are here. Let's see what the damage is. Well, that was a disaster. They told us it was ready on the phone, but we got there and they've done everything else but the leaf springs, which is the biggest job they needed doing. Um, they were saying you need a specialist for it. After sitting there a while and trying to translate as usual, they said that, uh, they could get a specialist there tomorrow. So the van's there for another night, a bit of a wasted trip really. But at least it's going to get sorted and he has had a service already and the squeaking front brakes was the brake discs this time so now we've had the pads done and the discs so hopefully there should be much else going wrong with them on the plus side um, I did drive past the McDonald's in the taxi we went past the McDonald's on the way here and the boys haven't had one for ages and they've been asking for one so I'm going to surprise them with a McDonald's well another taxi journey later and we're back with the goods Welcome back. <laughs> so Kev's back as you can see. We went out for a bite to eat yesterday and we got a phone call while we were sitting there to say he was ready. So we got a taxi to go and pick him up. Got there, checked over and he still wasn't done. Even though they said he was done, they said they'd done things that they didn't do. Um, like I've said already, everyone we've met in Turkey has been lovely. This is the first time that we've met a sort of bad person that's tried to sort of have us over, really. They tried charging us a lot of money for it as well. It was about £450 um, and they didn't do the work. It was The rear leaf springs are still broke, so we didn't pay. We ended up getting the keys and jumping in it and uh, going. So today the job is to try and find another one. So we've just been to another garage, they can't help us either I think because these are more for like cars rather than big old sprinter vans like Kev um, and since we've been driving we've realised that the knocking is still happening from the front which they was, the other garage was supposed to have sorted out and um, they've only replaced one brake disc so yeah that wasn't the best garage to have used but it is what it is and hopefully we'll be able to get it in somewhere else so we're at yet another garage but this one seems to know what they're talking about they're on it straight away they've pulled us a chair up so instead of leaving it i think we may even wait here and just uh, watch to make sure it does get done these people um well the last people seem genuine but so you can never tell but these ones do seem to know what they're talking about. I said I want the heavy duty five ton and they said yes. So fingers crossed, we're finally getting fixed. It becomes quite stressful with the language barrier because I'm sure Google Translate doesn't exactly say what you're actually saying. Words become a miss and that's when it gets lost in translation, I think. But these guys seem to know what they're talking about. If managed to make them understand, we think, and they said that it would be done by three o'clock. So they've pulled us up a chair, got us a drink, um, and it's probably better that we actually hear um, watching what they're doing. So then if something's not quite right, we can say that's not what we wanted. So hopefully we can get it done. Scary thing, Kev, like this. So we are back in another cab. I don't know how many cabs we've got this week. It's been a joke, but Everything's pulled apart on Kev um, and they're just waiting for the parts to come in now. Um, so we're going to go and grab a bite to eat and hopefully get a phone call to say that he's ready to be picked up. So we found this American diner and how good does this look? 
God, we've wanted a chicken burger for so long and this one looks amazing. Morning guys. Once again, you join us back in a taxi on the way to pick Kev up. This time we've received regular photos with what they've been doing. They've done more than we even asked for as well, which is nice. Turns out the back brake pads needed doing as well. A couple of other bits. So, so far, really happy with the service. Hoping we get there and he is fixed for good this time because it's the bill is starting to add up with everything. Even the taxis, although they're cheap, they do add up. So this is one thing you need to bear in mind if you come travelling, is all of the unexpected expenses. We'll let you know a, co a total cost of this one as soon as we know, but I don't think it's going to be cheap. So just bear that in mind. But I'm hoping it's going to be good as new. We'll see. We are back. Look how much higher he sits now. It's like he's got a lift kit on him. So these are all of our old parts. And look at the rear brake pads. Nothing left of them. I can't believe the other garage didn't pick it up. We've also had new suspension arms on the front. New discs. Perfect. We're even going for a little test drive this time. This is how sure he is. I wish the last one done this, but this is exactly what we've been after. Can't recommend this one enough. So I think we've just got to wait for the main man now to sort out the price and we're good to go, but well happy. They've done everything that we've asked for this time um, and he is literally better than new. So it came to 12,750 lira, which works out about £600. But for everything that they have done, is they've gone above and beyond haven't they yeah it's unbelievable um we had a brake light out they've done that the thermostat uh what was it the thermostat uh, the temperature sensor oh the temperature sensor was hanging down and the other one didn't do that they've managed to put it up um just everything that they've just done is brilliant and for the work that they've put into it for 600 quid it's a bargain really <laughs> I don't think we'd have got that much done back at home for that sort of price, so we're really chuffed. So today is the day we leave the apartment. Finally. Fairly sad to say goodbye to it because that aircon was lovely, but that's the only thing I miss. It is nice getting back into Kev. And now we have got a few errands to run. So we need to go and top the data on the SIM card up. We've got some shopping to do, and then we'll be off to our next stop. So what we got? Heinz baked beans. Oh my god, I can't believe it. The Turkish beans are all right and they're pretty similar, but you can't beat proper baked beans. I can't wait to have baked beans on toast later now. Well, we've made it, our ultimate van life destination, this one. I'm not going to give too much away. A few people may be able to guess from the scenery behind us or even from following our socials. But this place is going to be amazing. Catch us next week as we spend our first week here. And if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe.